Welcome to ihnani.com. Windows Forms, How to Videos Binding Data and Using Binding Navigator How to, Steps to Complete the Exercise First, we create a Windows Form. For the exercise we use C Sharp Template. Then we add Binding Navigator, and other controls onto the form. We follow it with creating a data source using Data Source Configuration Wizard. Finally, we bind the controls on the form to the binding source. You can find a more details on binding source and binding navigator on our blog. Please feel free to look at them for a better understanding of this video. Let us start with our exercise. We will be using Visual Studio .NET 2010 in this video. Please note. The mouse left button clicks, are displayed with green rings, and right click with blue rings, appearing around the mouse cursor with a click sound. As you can see, we have our Visual Studio .NET 2010 open. You can also see, an empty Windows Forms project is already created. Let us go ahead and add a Windows form to our project. To add a form, go to the Solutions Explorer, right click on the project. From the shortcut menu that opens up, select Add, and then select Windows form. This shows up a Add New Item window. Let us give our form a name. I will call it as, Binding Navigator Demo.cs. Yes. After that click on the Add button. This will add a Windows form onto our project, which you can see in the Solution Explorer. The Windows form is now ready and you can see it in the design mode on the screen. Now let us add some controls onto the form. In the demo, I will be working with three fields from the table, Employee, of AdventureWorks 2008, SQL Server Database. So, let us go and add three label controls and three text box controls to the form. Let us change the text of the labels. To do this, select the first label control. Go to the Properties window and click on the property, text, and enter, first name. Repeat the steps for second and third labels. Give them the text as, last name, and job title for the second and third labels respectively. Let us now arrange the controls in a proper order. Next, let us add the binding navigator control from the toolbox. To do this, drag and drop it onto the form. As you can see, even if you drop it at the bottom of the form, it docks to the top. Top position is the default value while well, you can change it from the properties window. That looks better, isn't it? Now that, we are done with designing the form, let us, bind it, to the database. In order to bind the controls, onto the fields in a database, we have to set the text property under data bindings group. To do this, in the properties window, expand the data bindings property by clicking the arrow sign next to it. Then, click the text property under the data bindings property. Now click the drop down arrow for the text property. At this point, as you can see, the data source window is empty. Let us then add a data source to the project. 
you can see the Add Project Data Source at the bottom of the window. Click the Add Project Data Source link, which will invoke the Data Source Configuration Wizard. The first screen that you see is the Choose a Data Source Type screen, which allows you to choose the data source for your data. As you can see, you have several options. You can click on the database icon for connecting to various databases, such as SQL Server, Oracle, and so on. The Web Service icon allows you to connect to a web service. The Object icon for connecting to business logic components. SharePoint icon to connect to SharePoint Server. For our demo, let us go with Database. Click on the Database icon. And then click the Next button. You will be taken to the Choose a Database Model page. Here, select the Data Set option. And click the Next button. Next is the Choose your Data Connection page. Here, you can either select the existing connections that you have created earlier or you can create a new one. Let me go ahead and create a new connection for this demo. Click the New Connection button. In the Add Connection dialog box that appears, make sure that the data source field is Microsoft SQL Server, SQL Client. If it's something different, Use the Change button next to change the data source type box. Enter the server name. For this demo, I have my SQL server installed on the demo machine. So I will enter the words, local host for the server. If you have your database server on a different machine, then you can either give the server name, or the server IP. If your server is configured to accept Windows authentication, just select it and continue. Else, select the Use SQL Server Authentication and provide a valid username and password. I will go with the option, Use Windows Authentication. Next, we need to select the database. For this, click on the drop-down box and from the list that appears, select your database. For our demo, we will be using AdventureWorks 2008 database. Select it. Test your connection settings, by clicking the Test Connection button, to ensure that the details you provided is correct. Click OK. Now, you will be taken back to, Choose your Data Connection page. The connection that you just created will be selected. If you click on the plus icon, next to the connection string, you can see the connection string that was created. Click Next. This is where you will be selecting the database objects that you will be binding to your form. Here, you have the option to select data directly from the tables in your database, or from the views that are available in your database, or from the stored procedures or from the functions. I will be using a view that is there in the database. Expand the view node. And then select the checkbox for V Employee Human Resources. Provide a name for the data set that will be created. By default, it will be the database name, suffixed with the word dataset. Since we only could need three fields, let us select only those fields that we need for this demo. Select the fields by clicking the checkboxes next to the fields that we need. Once you are done with the selection, click the Finish button and you are done. The wizard will then generate a data set, a binding source, and a table adapter objects for use. Now, under the text property, for the text box on the form, you can see, a new node named, Other Data Sources. You can also see that, it is bound to the data set that we just created. Expand the nodes until you find the dataset. Now, if you expand the dataset, you can see the vEmployee object, with three fields that we selected. 
Let us go and bind the text boxes to these fields from the data set. Click on the text box on the form. And then select the text property and click the drop down arrow. Expand till you find the fields and select the. Follow the same steps for the other two text boxes. Now that we are done with binding the text boxes, let us bind the binding navigator control. Select the binding navigator control. Since it is made up of multiple controls, make sure that you have selected it correctly by confirming it in the properties window. In the properties window, under the category data, select the binding source property, click the drop down box and select the employee binding source. That completes the data binding of all the controls on the form. We are all done. Save it. And, execute the form. You can see the form with the data from the view. Test the form by clicking the next, previous, first record, and last record buttons to see the binding navigator in action. How did we do it? Let us recap the steps. We created a Windows form, and added, three label and text box controls onto it. And then we added a binding navigator control onto the form. We used the data source configuration wizard, the end result of which is, a table adapter, data set and a binding source objects. Then, we set the data bindings for the text boxes and binding navigator control. And finally, the last very important step that we did was to execute the form that we created. That brings us to the end of this how-to video on using the binding source and binding navigator objects within a Windows form. If you have any questions or need more information on a part of this video, please use the forum at ignani.com. We will be happy to help you. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how-to videos and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Check out the forum topic related to this tutorial on the site for all your questions.